The Flatten Field Mystery. Sally, what's swinging? Loli, what are you doing? Taking a nap. I was feeling tired. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. That's weird. There are apples everywhere. Who would drop a... Oh, oh, oh pardon me, Loli. I was just finishing my masterpiece. There, my collection is complete. What collection is that, Vincent? It's my big apple collection. I have created two very large apple masterpieces. I call this one, One Big Red Apple. Uh, wouldn't it make more sense to call it many small red apples? Well, from the ground, it looks like many small apples, Loli. But when you're looking down on it from up high, it is one big apple. Vincent's right. From up here, it looks like one huge red apple. <laughs> Oh, this is nothing. My other apple masterpiece is so big, it can only be seen from way up high in the sky. Wow! That apple must be enormous. Ah, which reminds me. I have to rent a hot air balloon to see how my other apple art looks. Oops! <laughs> Can't forget my snowshoes. Snowshoes? Goodbye! Bye! You'll never, never guess, guess what happened! happened. A can of green paint exploded? Huh? I think Loli is wondering why you're painted green. Oh, because Martians are green. Martians? What Martians are you talking about? The Martians that landed on the wheat field. Wow, you actually saw Martians landing on the wheat field? Well, no, we didn't actually see the Martians. But we did see the huge mark that their flying saucer left behind. Come, Come on, on, we'll, we'll show, show you. you. See, that's where the Martians landed in their flying saucer. Hmm, I'm not sure this wheat field was flattened by a Martian's flying saucer, but I am sure that whatever did flatten it is a mystery. Goldbug here, reporting live from a wheat field where it's believed that Martians have landed. Oh, and here they are now. Hello, Martians. Welcome to Earth. Zilzabup! Zilzabup! <laughs> Those aren't Martians, Goldbug. That's Pig Will and Pig Won't. Oh? So it isn't true? Martians didn't flatten this field? Well, I don't think so. Which is why I'm going to solve the mystery of what did flatten this field. Okay, ready for it? Here goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery! for updates to a mystery that's totally out of this world. Goldbug out! Did you see that? Goldbug thought we looked like real Martians! You know what would make us look even more like Martians? Three eyes! Because Martians have three eyes. At least we think Martians have three eyes. So, where should we start, Huckle? With our biggest clue, the field. We need to think about what could have flattened the field other than a flying saucer. What about a big farm tractor? Hmm, a big tractor could flatten a field for sure. And we know that tractors have big wheels, so if a tractor flattened this field, we would see big wheel tracks, right? Right! right. Then let's have a look. Nope, no big wheel tracks. Then it couldn't have been a tractor. Maybe whatever flattened the field came from above. You mean you think a flying saucer really did land on the field? No, but it could be another flying object. 
Loli's right. Lots of things fly, and I know just the place to look for them. The busy town airport. Okay, so we need to look for a big round object, the same shape that matches the flattened field. Hey, what about Rudolph von Flugel's airplane? Oh, but it's not big and round, so it couldn't have been a plane. Look, there's Goldbug in the busy town news helicopter. No, wait, it's sort of round, but way too small. And it can't be that blimp either. It's big, but it's not round. It's oval shaped. Well, if it's not an airplane, a helicopter, or anything else flying around busy town, then what could have flattened the field? What else? A Martian flying saucer, that's what! Sorry, guys, I just don't believe Martians landed in a flying saucer. Boy, the wind sure is strong out there. Look how far down it's bending the antennas. <gasps> we forgot antennas! Martians always have antennas! <gasps> or at least we think they do. You know, you just gave me an idea, Sally. Maybe a strong wind is what flattened the field. You mean like a tornado? Yes, but how can we find out if a tornado passed through Busy Town? What about Vanderbilt? Yes, but he doesn't have equipment to see a tornado. The real weather expert in Busy Town is Wallace the Weatherman. Busy Town Weather Station, here we come! Anytime a tornado or big storm rolls through Busy Town, I see it on my radar screen here. Have you seen any tornadoes lately, Weatherman Wallace? Nope, I haven't seen one in years. If it wasn't a tractor, or an airplane, or a tornado, well, I could have flattened the field. We told you! A Martian flying saucer landed on the field! Oh, <laughs> I'm afraid that's not possible. I can see everything that flies in the skies over Busy Town, and I've never seen a Martian flying saucer. What's that flying object, Wallace? I don't know. You know. It kind of looks like... A Martian Flying Saucer! They're coming back! And we're not there to greet them! It kind of looks like a hot air balloon. Can you zoom in, Wallace? You're right, Huckle. It is definitely a hot air balloon. Wait a minute. Didn't Vincent say something this morning about going to find a hot air balloon? You're right, Loli. He did. He said one of his apple pictures was so big, it could only be seen from way up high in the sky. Do you think a hot air balloon has something to do with the mystery of the flattened field? I'm not sure. There's only one way to find out. Back to square one. Or is that round one? <laughs> <laughs> Martians were here! We found Martian shoes! <laughs> Those aren't Martian shoes, Pigwill. They're snowshoes. They sure are. But what are a pair of snowshoes doing in the middle of a field in the summer? Well, I don't know. But I remember that Vincent was carrying a pair of snowshoes this morning when he rushed off to find a hot air balloon. And look, there he is now. It's Vincent, all right. And he's pointing to the field. Hey. Maybe Vincent's hot air balloon is what flattened the field. It's big and it's round. You're right, Loli, but only the balloon is big and round. That basket that lands on the ground is small and square. I don't get it. If Vincent's hot air balloon didn't flatten the field, then what did? Come on, you've worn the Martian shoes long enough. It's my turn. It's not. It's two. It's not. It's two. It's not. It's two. Hmm, that's it. I know how the field got flattened. So, Huckle, after going in circles, did you finally solve the mystery? I'm pretty sure I did, Goldbug. Here's what I think happened. First, we found a flattened field in the shape of a big circle. We figured out it couldn't be a farm tractor, and it couldn't be an aircraft, and it couldn't be a tornado, because Wallace said he hadn't seen one in years. It wasn't until I saw Pig Will running on the field with a pair of snowshoes that I thought, that's how the field got flattened. Then I remembered that Vincent was carrying a pair of snowshoes this morning. And I also remembered that Vincent had just made a giant art masterpiece that could only be seen from high up in the air. So I think that Vincent used the snowshoes to flatten the field to make his giant work of art and that this circle is his big apple masterpiece. There you have it, folks. 
Huckle has rounded up the facts to solve the flattened field mystery. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one too. This is Goldbug signing off, saying, and how do you like them apples? Goldbug out! So are you saying that this big, round, flattened field is actually Vincent's artwork? It is indeed, Sally. You are standing in the middle of my other Big Apple Collection masterpiece. We are! Yes, but to truly enjoy it, you must see it from high in the sky. So please, join me for a ride. Look! The flattened field looks just like a giant apple. And there's a worm, just like me. <laughs> it certainly is a masterpiece, Mr. Van Goat. Yes, you might even say it is the apple of my eye. <laughs> <laughs> The Flying Potatoes Mystery. That sounds good. It sure does. Makes me wish I played a musical instrument. Your wish is my command. <laughs> okay, here it goes. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Gee, I didn't know you could play the wormonium. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> I think something just fell into Mr. Seuss's tuba. I think you're right. But what was it? I'll soon find <laughs> out. Lily to the rescue! Huh? A potato? I don't know where that came from, but it sure doesn't belong in here. <gasps> oh, no! Are you all right, Lily? Oh, <laughs> I'm okay. So this is the potato that flew into the tuba. Hmm, where did it come from? Hmm, a flying potato that came from who knows where. That sounds to me like... Goldbug here, reporting live from a busy street in Busytown, where a potato just dropped from the sky. What's going down, Huckle? Well, Goldbug, this potato flew in out of nowhere and landed right in a tuba. A potato in a tuba? That doesn't sound right. <laughs> You're right. It sounded terrible. And we are going to find out where the potato came from. Right, team? Ready for it? Here goes! Folks, drop everything and follow Huckle and his team as they solve the mystery of the flying potato. <gasps> Make that flying potatoes, and that's the buzz in Busytown. Goldbug, out of here. Where do we start looking for clues, Huckle? Well, let's see. We know that Farmer Patrick Pig grows potatoes. Maybe he can tell us where the flying potatoes came from. To, to Patrick, Patrick Pig's farm. farm. I'm the best baseball player on the team. No, you're not. I'm the best baseball player on the team. <laughs> hey, that was Huckaloli and Sally. Where are they going in such a hurry? <laughs> what was that? It's a potato storm. Huh? <laughs> Whoa, grab your baseball glove. We've got flying potatoes to catch and a tail to protect. I'm with you, Pigwell. <laughs> Sally, 
Lonely and lonely. Where did they go? Uh, Heads up! Huh? It came down from the sky, you say? I've seen potatoes sprout roots, but I've never seen them sprout wings. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine where those falling potatoes are coming from. Hey, Huckle. Did you notice any potato trees along that street? Maybe the potatoes are falling from trees. Potatoes don't grow on trees. Come on over here. I'll show you. Potatoes grow in the ground. So oh, that's where would they you come look from. at that? <laughs> and this is about as far as I've ever seen a potato fly. Right into the sack. Where are you taking all these potatoes, Farmer Patrick Pig? Oh, I'm delivering them to a few different places around Busytown. But most of them go to Grocer Dog Supermarket. Hey, that's just across the street from where the potatoes were falling. Then that's where we should look for clues next. To, to the, the supermarket. supermarket! See you later! Thanks, Farmer Patrick Pig! Thanks for your time! <laughs> Good luck solving your mystery, kids! Hmm, all of these potatoes are in bags. But the ones landing on the street aren't in bags. Well, that's one thing to be thankful about. If a full bag of potatoes fell from the sky, it could squash a guy. Or at least a worm. The flying potatoes must be coming from somewhere else. Come on, team. We need to look for more clues. Look! That potato is coming from the other side of the supermarket. I got it! I got it! <gasps> look out, guys! <gasps> Are you all right? <laughs> I'm exhausted. Me too. We could sure use a hand and something else to put the potatoes in. Our car is full. Okay, guys, we'll help you as soon as we can. But I said I would solve this mystery, so I have to keep looking for clues. And the sooner we solve this mystery, the sooner the potatoes will stop flying through the air. We need to check out the street behind the supermarket. Come on. Okay, so what's around here that might have something to do with potatoes? Well, there's a bank. I don't think a bank would have potatoes, Loli. And there's a movie theater. Movie theaters have popcorn, but they don't have potatoes. Mmm, french fries. All this mystery solving has made me hungry. One order of french fries, please. Sorry, but I ran out of fries just a few minutes ago. I can't figure it out. Usually I have enough spuds to last a couple of days. Spuds? What are spuds? Spuds are potatoes. I've ordered more, but I'm not sure when they'll be delivered. Hmm. So french fries are made out of potatoes. And you ran out of potatoes before you were supposed to. The timing couldn't have been worse. Mr. Fixit just installed a brand new french fry slicer out back. A machine that slices french fries? I'd like to see that. Ha! <laughs> There's Farmer Patrick Pig with a new batch of potatoes. Am I ever glad to see you? Hi, Farmer Patrick Pig. Hi. Did you kids find out about those flying potatoes yet? No. We're still trying to figure out where they're coming from. Spuds to slicer. Here we come. Oh, boy. We're going to see how the potatoes get sliced up. Look, the machine is still turned on. Yep, it's running the way it normally does, but without the potatoes. Ooh, that doesn't sound so good. Whoa! That's it! I think I've solved the mystery. So tell us, Huckle, are you any closer to solving this appealing mystery? I sure am, cool bug. Here's what I think happened. Potatoes were falling out of the sky, but they weren't coming from Patrick Pig's farm. And they weren't coming from the supermarket. That's when we realized the potatoes were coming from the street behind the supermarket. When Loli ordered french fries, Fritz said that he ran out of potatoes sooner than he'd expected, and that Mr. Fixit had just installed a new french fry slicer. But when I saw the new slicer in action, I realized that Mr. Fixit's new invention wasn't working right. It was getting jammed. And when it did, a lever shot up. I think that when potatoes were put in the machine, the lever sent them flying over the supermarket roof onto the street. 
Well, that sounds like a good explanation, Huckle. Let's see if you're right. Potatoes, please. So far, so good. But wait, I bet the machine will jam right about now. Uh -oh. Woo well, there you have it, folks. It looks like Huckle and his team have solved the mystery of the flying potatoes. Everybody, all together, solve the mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. No matter how you slice it, Huckle and his team are the best there is when it comes to solving mysteries. Go bug out! I've got to call Mr. Fix-It right away. I need to get that french fry slicer fixed before Busy Town gets buried in spuds. I just need to tighten this doohickey here and loosen this thingamajig here and... Ta-da! All fixed! Thanks, Mr. Fix-It. Thanks to you kids for solving that mystery. What do you say I cook up some delicious fries to celebrate? My treat! Thank All you! Right. Mm, these are the best french fries ever! Does anyone need some potatoes? Lots of potatoes? Some of them are kind of bruised. Hmm, bruised potatoes, huh? Those would be good for making mashed potatoes. I love mashed potatoes! I love them more! Let's get cooking! Ah! Oh, dear! Now we have to pick up bruised potatoes and bruised brothers. Come on, guys! <laughs> Here we come! We'll help you! <laughs> <laughs> the Totally Fishy Mystery. working today. You're right, Sally. It's only dribbling instead of gushing. What's the problem, Mr. Root? I'm guessing there's something stuck in the drain hole. Out of the way, little fellas. Uh-huh. Here's what's causing the problem. Someone's toy boat. Good job. It's a toy boat. Hooray! Let me take your picture, Mr. Root. So you can always remember the day you fixed the fountain. Sure. How's this? Say cheese. Cheese. Whoops. <gasps> oh, no. Now it's gone right inside the drain. And that's not good. Uh-oh. What's happening? Take cover. Whoa. <gasps> <laughs> Thanks, Lily. You make a great umbrella. Wow, that was exciting. And look, Mr. Root, the fountain's working again. This time you really fixed it. Yes, I guess I did. And I had my daily shower, too. <laughs> See you later. Bye, kids. Enjoy your day. What are you doing, Pig Will and Big Won't? We're rescuing these goldfish. Before this puddle dries up. But how did goldfish get in a puddle on the sidewalk? Oh, they probably dropped in by parachute. No, I think it was raining goldfish. Goldfish don't drop from the sky, Pig Will and Pig Won't. <laughs> then how did they get there? I don't know. <laughs> so that means we have... a mystery to solve! This is Goldbug here, all ready to catch a big news story. And this one smells very fishy. What's happening, Huckle? Well, Goldbug, we found this bottle full of goldfish, and we don't know how they got here. But we are going to find out and solve this mystery. Ready for it? Here goes! <laughs>
watching as Huckle reels in the answer to this totally fishy mystery. I'm Goldbug, and that's the fishy buzz in Fishy Town. Okay, where do we start, Haka? Well, let's start by thinking of all the places goldfish could come from. I was just at the dentist's office yesterday, and his aquarium is full of goldfish. So maybe these are the dentist's goldfish. That's it! These little guys were fish-napped! Fish-napped? What do you mean? Someone snuck in, put the fish in their pockets, and snuck out again before the dentist <laughs> saw them. But the clever fish escaped by jumping out of the pockets and into this puddle. I don't think so, Big Will. But we should at least go to the dentist's office to see if any of his goldfish are missing. To the dentist's office! Here's the dentist's office. Let's go inside. There's the aquarium, and it's empty. I'm sure it was full of goldfish yesterday. So maybe the goldfish in the puddle did come from here. I told you they were fish-napped. That was my idea. You only said it first. I thought it first. Huh? But... Come on, let's put these fish back. Excuse me, kids. What are you doing? Don't worry, Dr. Dentist. Your goldfish are safe and sound. See? We rescued them. But those aren't my goldfish. Then where did yours go, Dr. Dentist? There were lots of goldfish in here yesterday. <laughs> They're still there, Hilda. Sometimes they like to hide. Watch when I feed them. Are you sure you're not missing any goldfish? Nope. Looks like they're all here. Oh. They're fun to watch. Yes. Aren't they pretty? Goldfish make great pets. Hmm. I'm sure the pet shop sells goldfish. Let's check it out. Come on, team. Bye, Bye Dr. Dr. Dentist. To the pet shop. You little guys are sure getting lots of exercise today. <laughs> Look, Sally. I'm a puffer fish. <laughs> Here's the goldfish tank, but the goldfish are all gone. Then this must be where the fish napping happened. Wow, you're right, Pigwell. Excuse me, sir, but where have all your goldfish gone? Oh, uh, did you want a goldfish? Uh, I'm very sorry, but we're all sold out. Uh, would you like a guppy instead? Actually, we're here to try and solve a mystery. We found some goldfish this morning in a puddle on the sidewalk, and we're trying to find out where they came from. Goldfish on the street. That's a mystery, all right. Do you think the goldfish might have come from your pet shop? Hmm, no, because my goldfish were all here this morning. I only sold them a little while ago. A customer came in and bought every goldfish I had. All 20 of them. Gee, who'd buy that many goldfish all at once? Hmm, maybe someone who lost a bunch of goldfish this morning and wanted to replace them. Huckle, are you saying that the customer who just bought 20 goldfish is the same person who lost these goldfish this morning? It's possible. What did this customer look like? Uh, uh, hmm, about so high, sort of big nose dressed in coveralls. Hilda! My nose isn't big. And Hilda's been with us all day, so she didn't buy the goldfish. No, no, it wasn't her. It was a him. And there was one more thing I remember, something very odd. What? <gasps> he came into the shop soaking wet. Huh? Look, you can still see his footprints. That's great. All we need to do is follow the footprints, and we'll find out who these goldfish belong to. Come on, let's follow them. Thank you. The trail leads into the park. Why would anyone take goldfish into a park? Um, to take them for a walk? You don't take fish for a walk, pig, won't. I knew that. 
Uh-oh, the trail disappeared. We'll just have to keep going across the grass in that direction and keep our eyes open for clues. You're right, Huckle. Come on, everyone. Look, another puddle. And, and a toy, toy boat. I, I saw it first. No, I saw it first. That toy boat looks familiar to me. Hey, it's the same toy boat that got stuck in the fountain. But the fountain is way over there. So how did this boat get here? Maybe it flew over here when the fountain exploded. That's it. I think I just figured out how the goldfish got in their puddle. Goldbug here with breaking news. Tell me, Huckle, have you hooked on to the answer to the totally fishy mystery? I certainly have, Goldbug. Here's what I think happened. When we found the goldfish in the puddle, we tried to think of places where goldfish might have come from. First, we went to the dentist's office, but all of his goldfish were still there. Then we went to a pet shop and found out that a man who was soaking wet had just bought all the goldfish in the shop. We figured he must be the owner of the goldfish in the puddle, so we followed his wet footprints to the park. When we saw the toy boat that got blasted across the park, I remembered what else was in the water before the fountain exploded. Goldfish! So I think the goldfish were blasted out, sending them right over the park wall and onto the sidewalk where Pig Will and Pig Won't found them. And the soaking wet man in the pet shop was Mr. Root, buying new goldfish to put in the fountain. You heard it here first, folks. The floundering fish were flung from the fountain. But how do we know that for sure, Huckle? Let's go to the fountain and find out. Come on. Mr. Root, did you just buy those goldfish in the pet shop? Yes, I did. All the goldfish in the fountain had vanished. We found them. They were, they were in, in a puddle. puddle. Why, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. It's official. The totally fishy mystery has been solved. And that's the buzz in Busy Town. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Yay! Hooray for Huckle! I think it's time these goldfish went home again. There you go. Oh, they must be so happy now. And I'm happy to have my new toy boat. I saw it first, so it should be my toy boat. <laughs> uh oh, I hope that toy boat doesn't block the drain again. I'll get it. No, I'll get it. Whoa! You two just can't stay away from those goldfish, can you? <laughs> <laughs> The Radio Message Mystery. Yep, this buoy is in good shape. What are you doing, Sergeant Murphy? <laughs> well, Sally, part of my job is to make sure all the buoys in Busy Town Bay are all in place and in good working order. What are boys for, Sergeant Murphy? Boys warn boats that there are big rocks nearby so that the boats don't crash into them. Crashing into the rocks wouldn't be a good thing, especially way out here where there's nobody to help. Oh, you've got it, Huckle. Okay, crew, time to head back to port. Pull up the anchor, please. Aye, aye, Sergeant Murphy. Holy! <laughs> <laughs> Tricked you again, Huckle. <laughs> <laughs> you sure did, Lolly. You're the trickiest worm I know. Look, it's Fisherman Frank heading out to set his fishing nets. Thanks for taking us out on your police boat, Sergeant Murphy. It was lots of fun. Anytime, Sally. That sounds like a call for help. But what is goat socks supposed to mean? Beats me, Sergeant Murphy. Do you recognize the voice? No, Huckle. It's hard to hear clearly. I don't know who it is. Well, we don't know who it is, 
But we do know two things. Whoever the message is from needs help. And who that is, is a mystery! Busy Town Action Bug News! Goldbug here for Busy Town Action News. So what mystery have you tuned in today, Huckle? Well, Goldbug, Sergeant Murphy just received a call for help. But before he can answer it, we have to solve the radio message mystery by figuring out who sent the message and what it means. Are you ready for it? Here goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery! Buzz in Busy Town. Stay tuned for important news updates. Goldbug at. I go to the police station and wait by the radio in case there's another call. All right, let's get started solving this mystery. The message said goat socks. So where would we go to find a goat in socks? Farmer Patrick Pig's farm. He has goats, but I'm not sure about socks. Sounds like a good place to start. Let's go. I solved the mystery! No, you didn't! I solved it! No, you didn't! I solved it! No, me! No, me! We think we know what goat socks help means. It means Farmer Patrick Pig needs help putting socks on his goat. Why would he want to put socks on a goat? Don't ask us. We're not the ones who called for help. Well, we're going to Farmer Patrick Pig's farm right now, so we'll see if you're both right. Come on. Hi, Farmer Patrick Pig. Did you call Sergeant Murphy for help? Nope. Uh, why do you ask? Because he received an urgent message about goats. Are your goats okay, Farmer Patrick Pig? You bet. They're great. They're late? Late for what? Uh, not late, Loli. I said great. My goats are great. Oh, I thought you said late. Hmm. Late and great do sound the same. Okay, thanks, Farmer Patrick Pig. We have to go. We have a mystery to solve. Okay, kids. See ya. Nope. No socks on this goat. <laughs> Say, you two are just in time to help unload these hay bales. Oh. And you can have some buttered corn as soon as you're finished. Oh. Why are we stopping here, Huckle? Well, the message said goat and socks. We've already gone to a place where there are goats. So now we need to go to a place where there are socks. Busy Town Cleaners. Hold everything! This time we've really solved a mystery. Here's what must have happened. Mr. Wrinkle the Cleaner called for help because... Goat, socks, help! Means a goat is stuck in one of his big washing machines full of socks and needs help to get out. Why would a goat be in a washing machine? Because the goat was dirty, silly. Excuse us, Mr. Wrinkle. Did you call Sergeant Murphy on his radio for help? He received an urgent message. Something about socks. Nope, not me. But now that you mention it, I could use some help folding clothes. Folding toes? Why would you want to fold your toes? <laughs> That's funny. I said folding my clothes, not toes. Hey, two more words that sound the same. Clothes and toes. Right, just like late and great. Sorry, Mr. Wrinkle, we'd like to stay and help you, but we have an important mystery to solve. Let's head over to the police station to see if Sergeant Murphy has received another message. We went to Farmer Patrick Pig's to see if he had any trouble with his goats. But he said everything was great. Then we went to Busy Town Cleaners to see if Mr. Wrinkle needed help with his socks. But the only help he needed was folding his clothes. We thought maybe you received another message. Nope. Not one peep. Wait! There it is again! Out. Socks! Help! Repeat! Out. Socks! Help! Goat! Socks! Help! It just doesn't make sense. Hmm. Okay, what do we know? We heard the words goat and socks and help. What else? 
message was hard to hear because of all the noise in the background. Maybe there was more in the message, but we just couldn't hear it. You're probably right, Sally. That noise was loud. Maybe the noise in the background is a clue. What did it sound like? I think I can help with that. I recorded the message so we can listen to it again. Can you make the background noise louder, Sergeant Murphy? Sure can, Huckle. It sounds like splashing water. And birds! What kind of birds? Seagulls! It sounds like seagulls! And where do we find splashing water and seagulls? At the sea! But what do goats and socks have to do with the sea? That's what we have to figure out, Loli. Slowly? Why do I have to figure it out slowly? I said lowly, not slowly. That makes three times today. Late great, toes clothes, slowly lowly. Another pair of words that sound very much the same. I guess thinking someone said something else is an easy mistake to make because so many words sound the same. Hmm, maybe we didn't hear the words in the message right either. Maybe we just thought it said goat and socks. Maybe it said something else. Words that sound like goat and socks. It's possible. Lots of words sound alike. They rhyme with each other. But what words rhyme with goat? Uh, let's see. Uh, a coat, uh, float, and boat. Boat has something to do with the sea. Maybe whoever needs help is in a boat. That's great, Sally. Now where? Where is the boat? Maybe it's somewhere that sounds like socks. Hawaii! Baffin Island! No, it has to be somewhere that sounds like socks. Box! Box sounds like socks! The boat is in a box! Don't be silly! A boat can't be in a box! A big box? Socks? Locks? Clocks? Rocks! Rocks? Boat? Rocks! Rocks are in the sea! Boat? Rocks! Help! Aha! Uh -huh. I think I know what the message means! And who sent it? Have you tuned in a solution to the radio message mystery? I think so, Goldbug. Here's what I think happened. We thought the message said, Goat, socks, help. When we went to Farmer Patrick Pig's to see about goats, he said the word great, and we thought he said late. And when we went to the cleaners to see about socks, we thought Mr. Wrinkle said toes when he really said clothes. Then later when I said lowly, he thought I said slowly. And it made me think that maybe the message was saying words that only sounded like goat and socks. Words that had something to do with the sea, because we heard splashing water and seagulls too. We figured boat sounds like goat and has to do with the sea. And rocks sounds like socks, which meant the message was really saying boat, rocks, help. And that's when I remembered seeing Fisherman Frank in his fishing boat heading out to where the buoy is. And where there's a buoy, there are dangerous rocks. So it's Fisherman Frank who needs help to get unstuck from the rocks. Then what are we waiting for? To the rescue! <laughs> there's Fisherman Frank. Huckle was right. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve. Thanks again, Huckle, and everybody. I should have been paying more attention. I guess I just didn't see the buoy. You might want to put a loud bell on it so boats can hear it at night or when we've got fog. What? Hot dog? Is someone serving hot dogs? No, thank you. I think we ate too much corn. Well, maybe just a teeny tiny one. Make that two teeny tiny ones. <laughs> <laughs> The Numbered Papers Mystery. Hi, Mr. Root. What are you doing? Oh, hello, kids. I'm planting a tree for Arbor Day. Happy Arbor Day, little guy. Yes, once a year we have a special day to celebrate trees. Great, glorious trees. Don't you just love them? We sure do, Mr. Root. 
And there are lots of trees to love in Busy Town Park. Right you are, Loli. I'm handing out brochures today with information about all the different kinds of trees in the park. Ooh, it's a map. Hey, a map of Busy Town Park. Yes. Take a tour and get to know some of the beautiful trees that live here. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Root. You're welcome. Happy Arbor Day. Okay, first we have to figure out where we are. <gasps> hey, catch it! Whoa! Hurry! I'll get it. Ah! Stay put, would you? <gasps> Here. Oh, thank you, Huckle. No problem, Mr. Frumble. Caught ya! Hey, who caught me? Where's the string coming from? Oh, look, it's a kite! <laughs> Whoa! Lowly! Oh, no! Clear the path! Coming through! Bring it down, Big Will and Big Won't! Lowly's tangled in the string up there! Oops! <laughs> I feel like doing a little parachuting today. Pig Will, would you give me a hand, please? Better yet, two hands. Ah, I can't see. The kite is getting away. Here, let me help you, Pig Won't. Thanks, Huckle. I got a kite to catch. See ya. Huh. The number two. I wonder where this came from. There's a bunch of them, Huckle, and they each have a different number on them. <laughs> Gotcha. Good save, Loli. You've got one and two, three, four, and I've got numbers five, six, eight, nine, and ten. Where's number seven? Number seven is missing. I wonder why these numbered papers were blowing in the wind. I wonder too, Loli. In fact, I'd say it's a mystery. Big Town Action Bug News. Bug here for Busy Town Action News, reporting live from Busy Town Park, where Huckle and his friends have found a number of numbered papers. That's right, Goldbug. We don't know where they came from, but we're going to find out and solve the numbered papers mystery. Right, team? You bet. We sure are. Ready for it? Here goes. <gasps> You can count on Huckle and his team to solve the numbered papers mystery. And that's the buzz in Busy Town. Goldbug out! Where do we start to look for clues, Huckle? Hmm. Well, we need to find a place where there are numbers. Look! Those runners are wearing numbers. Maybe the numbered papers blew off their shirts. But those runners are fast. We'll never catch them. Not by foot, we won't. But if we drive, we can catch up to them. Come on, team! <gasps> There's number 26 crossing the finish line. And number 33. Okay, keep your eyes open for a runner without a number. You mean nine runners without numbers, Huckle? <laughs> Hey, look, there's number six. And number eight. But we have those two numbers. Exactly. So that means these numbered papers aren't from the runner's shirts. So it's back to looking for clues. Yep. Come on, team. Box 22, in the kitchen. Box 23, dining room. Look, those boxes all have numbers on them. Yeah, maybe our numbered papers were labels that blew off those boxes. Great idea, Loli. Let's check it out. No, these boxes don't have numbered labels stuck on them. 
the numbers are written right on the box with marker. So the papers we found must have come from somewhere else. That's right. Let's keep looking for clues. Look inside the bank. That number is definitely the same size and shape as the numbers we found. And it's the number seven. Right. The one number that wasn't on the pages we found. So maybe these numbers here belong in the bank. Let's go in and check it out. Can I help you? We wanted to look at that numbered paper, please. Oh, that's our calendar. Today is the seventh day of the month. So then maybe the papers we found are part of this calendar. Let's compare this numbered page to the papers that we found. Hmm, this bank paper is different. See? It has two holes at the top. But the papers that we found don't have any holes, just torn corners. Oh, and some sticky tape. Hmm, that means our papers were once stuck to something. So our papers didn't come from the bank calendar? No, but look here. There are pine needles stuck to the tape. So we need to go where there are pine trees. To, to the, the park! My cart! It's getting away! That looks like the kite Pig Will and Pig Won't were flying. Yes, it does. But where are Pig Will and Pig Won't? It wasn't our fault. Honest, we had to tie our kite to something so we could eat our ice cream. So I guess it's the kite's fault. And if you ask the kite, it would say it's the wind's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we've got a mystery to solve. Okay, now which one of these trees is a pine tree? We just need to look at the map that Mr. Root gave us. Let's see. There it is, number six. So all we have to do is find the tree with the number six on it. Hey, look! Excuse me, Granny Goat. Have you found tree number six? No, Sally. The only tree I've found is the oak tree over there. Number seven. I can't find any of the others. Thanks, Granny Goat. Hmm, I've got an idea. Come on, team. The oak tree is marked number seven, but no one can find any of the other trees on the map. I think I know where these numbers came from. Goldbug here with tremendous breaking news. Tell me, Huckle. Would you say the tree helped you solve the numbered paper's mystery? It sure did, Goldbug. Here's what I think happened. We figured that the numbered papers didn't come from the runner shirts or the moving company's packing boxes. And they didn't come from the bank's calendar either. The papers we found had tape on them. And one of the pages, the one with number six on it, had pine needles stuck to the tape. So we went to the park where there are pine trees to look for clues. That's where we met Granny Goat. She could only find the oak tree, tree number seven on Mr. Root's tree tour. None of the other trees had numbers on them. The one number we didn't find on our pages was the number seven, the number that was taped to the oak tree. So I think that the numbered sheets of paper that we found were once taped to trees in the park as part of Mr. Root's tree tour. And on a windy day like today, the numbers blew away in the wind. Good thinking, Huckle. Huckle, I found something here. What is it, Sally? Look at this tree. It still has a piece of tape stuck to it. Look, it's a match. And this tree on Mr. Root's map is number six. It's the pine tree. We did it. Mystery solved. Everybody all together solved a mystery. Huckle, you can solve one, two. Folks, it all adds up that Huckle and his team have solved the numbered papers mystery. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Hello, all. Oh, I'm glad to see you picked up those paper numbers. Can't have the park all covered with litter on Arbor Day. 
Would you like us to help you stick the numbers back on the trees, Mr. Root? No thanks, Sally. I'm going to write the numbers on the trees with chalk. There. The wind can't blow away chalk. Ah, uh, this old pine tree is a favorite of mine. It's the biggest in the park. Look out! We can't stop! Whoa! Uh. Whoa! <laughs> this tree may be your favorite tree, Mr. Root, but I don't think it's the favorite of Pig Will and Pig Won't. <laughs> <laughs> The Sour Milk Mystery. Goldbug reporting from downtown Fizzy Town, where traffic has been jammed for hours on what Weatherman Wallace is calling the hottest day of the year. Good morning, kids. Gee, I thought you'd be at the beach swimming on such a hot day. We're going to Hilda's to make ice cream smoothies. We just came to pick up some milk. Here you go. It's a fresh batch straight from my farm. Thanks. See you later. See ya. You kids better take a shortcut to Hilda's. I was stuck in traffic all morning on Main Street, and it sure was hot. Okay, thanks. Bye. If Hilda doesn't hurry up with the smoothies, we're going to melt. No, we won't, because I'm going to cool us off. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like this soak, uh, I mean, the joke is on you, Pigwald. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, here are the smoothies. <laughs> I've never tasted anything like it. Ugh, you're right. It does taste awful. But I don't understand. I use the same recipe and ingredients that I always do. Let's take a look. I used bananas, ice cream, and milk. I, I volunteer to taste the milk. milk. Pee you! This milk smells awful. Ew, you're right, Pig Will. This milk is sour, but you and Sally brought it from your dad's store this morning. Yes, and Farmer Patrick Pig said it was a fresh batch from his farm. So how could it be sour? I don't know, but what I do know is this is... a mystery! This is Town Action Buggies! So, Huckle, what's chillin'? Well, Goldbug, Hilda's famous ice cream smoothies were ruined because of sour milk. So we're going to find out why the milk is bad and solve the sour milk mystery. Okay, ready for it? Here goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery! for important updates. Don't you dare go away. Go bug out. Since Sally and I got the milk from Dad's store, we should start looking for clues there. Great, let's go. Bye, Hilda. <sighs> it's so hot. I wish I had a drink. If someone was smart, they'd set up a lemonade stand. Yeah, I wish someone was smart. Hey, we're smart! Why don't we set up a lemonade stand? Right! But first we'll need supplies from the grocery store. Hey, Uncle Sally, wait for us! Hey, kids. What's going on? Hi, Dad. We're just checking the milk because the bottle that Farmer Patrick Pig gave us this morning was sour. Gee, I hope my fridge isn't broken. Because milk needs to stay cold to keep fresh. No, the fridge is fine and it's set at the perfect temperature. Ooh, but all the milk 
milk in here is sour. Smell this. Ew. I don't understand. How can the milk be sour in a cold fridge? Well, maybe the milk was already sour before you put it into the fridge. Hmm, you might be right. Hey, since Farmer Patrick Pig delivered the milk, we should ask him. Thanks, Dad. Come on, gang, let's go. He did it. No, I didn't. He did. Traffic jam that Farmer Patrick Pig told us about is still going on. That's okay. I know a shortcut to the farm. Follow me. Oh, why not? Because it's sour. No, it's not. It's perfectly fine. In fact, mmm, it's delicious. How can that be? The milk you delivered to our store this morning was sour, which is why we came to you to see if we got a bad batch. No, the milk I'm drinking now is from the same batch that I delivered this morning. I keep all my milk in a fridge to keep it fresh. Then, when I'm ready to deliver it, I put a block of ice in my milk truck to keep the milk cold and fresh while I make deliveries. So if the milk started out fresh at your farm, but ended up sour by the time it reached our dad's store, then something must have happened to it between here and there. Sally's right. Would you mind if we took a look at your delivery route, Farmer Patrick Pig? Of course not. What do you need the map for, Huckle? Well, if we can figure out when along the route the milk went bad, then maybe we can figure out why it went bad. Here's the map I use for my route. I start at the farm, then I go to the bakery, the ice cream shop, then your dad's store. Great! Thanks for all your help! Okay, gang, first stop, Mr. Humperdinck's Bakery. Good morning, Baker Humperdinck. We're trying to solve a mystery. We were wondering if the milk that Farmer Patrick Pig delivered to you today was fresh. I hope so. I've been using it all morning to make my cakes. <laughs> yes, thank goodness it's fresh. Hmm. That means that whatever made the milk go sour happened after Farmer Patrick Pig made his delivery to Mr. Humperdinck's bakery. What's the next stop on the delivery route, Huckle? The Busy Town Ice Cream Shop. And it's right next door. Let's go. Thanks for your help, Baker Humperdinck. Get your ice cold lemonade here. Hey, where's my ice? <laughs> that feels so good. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Look what you did. Now we have to go all the way back to the grocery store to get more ice. Yes, Huckle. My milk is perfectly fresh. Ah, and refreshing. Hmm. I was sure we'd figure out why the milk was sour if we went to all of Farmer Patrick Pig's delivery stops. Do you think that maybe we missed a clue at Dad's store? I don't know. But since it's the only delivery left on Farmer Patrick Pig's list, we'd better check again. Thanks for your help, Ellie. Oh, no! There's still a traffic jam. Don't worry. I know a shortcut to Dad's store. Follow me. Okay, so we know the milk was fresh at Farmer Patrick Pig's farm, Humperdinck's bakery, and Ellie's ice cream shop. But it was sour at Dad's store. So the question is, what happened on the way to Dad's store that caused it to go sour? Well, Dad and Farmer Patrick Pig both said that milk had to stay cold to stay fresh. So maybe the milk got warm. Maybe, but everyone's fridges were working. And Farmer Patrick Pig said he puts his milk on a big block of ice when he makes his deliveries. So, how could the milk have gotten warm? Get your ice cold lemonade here! Yeah, it's warm. Huh? That's impossible. I used ice. Uh, I think ice has to be frozen to work, Pigwill. <laughs> mm. Ice melts when it's in the sun too long. That's it. Melted ice. I think I know how the milk turns sour. How? how? <laughs> Goldbug here, reporting live from the grocery store where Huckle appears to have solved the mystery. That's right, Goldbug. 
Here's what I think happened. First, we discovered that all the milk Farmer Patrick Pig delivered that morning was sour. We went to Farmer Patrick Pig's farm and found out that the milk started out cold and fresh, but went sour somewhere between the farm and Dad's grocery store. So we followed Farmer Patrick Pig's delivery route to the bakery and the ice cream shop. But the milk in both places was cold and fresh. When I saw Pig Oil's bag of melted ice, I realized that ice melts in the hot sun. And I also remembered that Farmer Patrick Pig used ice in his truck to keep the milk cold. So I think that when Farmer Patrick Pig was waiting in the traffic jam, the block of ice melted, and that's why the milk went sour. Well, there you have it, folks. A sizzling story ends with Huckle solving the sour milk mystery. Everybody all together solve the mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Hooray for Huckle! This is Goldbug signing off. Guys, I finally got all the ingredients for ice cold lemonade. Sergeant Murphy, what's going on? Sorry, boys. You should know better than to park in front of a hydrant. I have to give you a ticket. The ticket belongs to you! <laughs> no, it doesn't! It's yours! Wait for us! Well, guys, I think their lemonade stand just closed for business. <laughs> <laughs>